What is going on you guys? In this video, I wanna talk about what I consider the best chest exercises to do on a total gym or sliding bench trainer. Now I've already made a video about this a while back that at this point I think is a little bit outdated. I've had some new kind of thoughts on working this particular muscle group. Certainly you've seen some of these exercises in past or recent videos, but I thought it'd be worthwhile to actually go back and revisit this because this is probably the number one request of body part that people have a lot of questions about. Now I'll brush up on technique a little bit in this video for each of the exercises I'll be talking about. I just wanna make this video somewhat brief and if I did, that this video go on pretty long if you guys do want specific questions about your own individual technique or form checks again certainly reach out to me we can do some one-on-one -on -one coaching i'll answer a question down below in the comment section as well as always please consider liking and or subscribing everything in this video will be featured down in the description box as well if you guys want to check it out and or support the channel all right jumping right into it the very first thing i'm going to say which you guys know i'm going to say is the basic total gym chest press now this is kind of deceiving because this really is not just one exercise it's actually a series of different variations of exercises just like when you guys go to the gym you think of any chest press machine what are you really doing you're essentially doing the exact same motion what makes it unique is the different positions and angles and even the type of resistance that you place upon your chest so the standard basic seated chest press first off some technique things to keep in mind really making sure that your arms are essentially locked back at your side you're not trying to roll your shoulders and press kind of like this when everything kind of dialed in and locked in Generally, I tell people to think about pressing through your chest line and more your nipple line, or maybe just above the nipple line a little bit. And from starting from that position, you can do you can start out just seated doing a chest press with your feet on the ground, and then slowly progress about taking the feet off the ground, and then progressing to maybe like a more of a tilted angle position. Regardless of what level you're starting, a beginner or advanced, these are all different subtle variations that give you more or less different stress on your chest. So even to putting your legs on the ground, that might seem kind of basic, but even for someone who's a little more advanced, you could do things like forced reps. Maybe you got some extra resistance bands or external weight in there, and you're trying to do some forced resistance with your feet on the ground, and that can be beneficial to kind of dissipate that force a little bit. The various tilted positions start out giving you guys a little more increased kind of tension and stress at the start of that exercise, which across the board, if you think we're doing anything with the chest, really any body part, as much as you can, trying to get that mind-muscle connection. So I always tell people, Feeling that bottom position is very important. So as I'm kind of feeling that bottom position, I'm thinking about how my muscles are all stretched out, in this case, my chest. And then as I squeeze, I wanna kind of really squeeze and drive together, squeezing my chest muscles. So aside from the feet on the ground, feet off the ground, the tilted positions, you can get a little bit higher up at a higher angle, which at that point you're starting needing extra extension in your cable, which I've said, you know, get, pick up extra carabiner clips, the extra swivel. Um, you certainly can add chains. I talked about that in the previous video. Uh, even some cable extensors, all sorts of ways that you don't top off, I should say, yeah, bottom out the machine where the bottom of the glide board gets stuck on the bottom crease that can happen on some models. So you're gonna need some extra extension. But from there, now you can do things like more of an incline press or just being a little bit higher up on your knees. And what that really does is it starts changing that line of action. And when I say line of action, I'm talking about the really where the pulley is in relation to where the cable is ending on your hands. So where is that tension really directed? Is it directed more this way? Is it directed more kind of horizontally across the body? And that leads me into another position where you can start sitting a little bit lower on the glide board, in which case you're definitely gonna need some extra length and tension to pull these off. But I've done this and featured this in a lot of past videos where by sitting a bit lower on the machine, and again, you can make this harder or easier in a number of different ways, but by seating, sitting a little bit lower on the glide board, now that line of action is more traditionally kind of centered where that line is coming right through my, my nipple line, right through that cable line. So right away, just there alone, I kind of listed out maybe eight, 10, depending how to get the different angles, a uh, bunch of different exercises from that baseline core foundational exercise. So I don't really view that as one exercise, there's variations. I really consider those all different exercises in of themselves to work your chest. So you can kind of pick on a certain day which of those may work for you or how you want to progress that. And just like going to the gym, right? The other extra thing that makes another exercise unique from one another is also the added resistance and tension. So you certainly can put a weight bar across that. I got one in this video I can show you guys. I featured it before and I'll link it down below. You can put a weight bar, just how you're doing a bar press, whether that's a cable press, but then also the type of resistance. So are you adding some external weights, some external band tension? All those things make a difference. Also the time under tension that you're doing. So all yours are different, unique ways of essentially doing the exact same, look for the same movement pattern, but they're very different and elicit a different stress response in that particular muscle. And then everything I just said correlates also to the chest flies, which we think about going to the gym, we think of, well, there's always push exercises, then there's this horizontal adduction motion of the shoulder, which we're basically we're doing working the chest flies. So if we kind of moving our shoulders inwards this way, as our chest contracts, this helps kind of do this. So any kind of, any kind of fly variation you can think about, 
And that's the great thing about this machine. If you got bad shoulders, you want to focus on the certain tension, you can kind of fine tune it a certain way with the actual added resistance, but also the angle you're set at. So putting your feet on the ground can help you kind of dissipate some of that force or stress. Maybe it's too much tension and stress to put your arms back here to kind of start that initial pull, but you can use your legs to kind of push yourself off a little bit and do a forced rep. The next big segment of exercise that I like a lot for a total gym or Saudi men's trainer, I should say a total gym because you kind of need this attachment to kind of work. So I know this kind of works in the Great Flex, but it's maximizing the Pilates toe bar attachment. You guys have seen me do this a lot in past videos. It's kind of basically somewhat dependent on your range of motion, your ability to kind of get into that low position on the glide board. Some people have told me they have a hard time doing with it. Some people feel uneasy doing it, so obviously don't do it. This is one I like a lot, either just using the actual Pilates bar attachment by itself, kind of pressing straight through this way, or getting some sort of either the weight bar attachment that comes with the Total Gym, or I should say the added attachment you guys pick up, or buying an external bar. Maybe like I use one, the Instar bar that has, it's meant for resistance bands. That works out really well. You guys are seeing it in this video. I'll link it down below. Uh, that's an excellent choice. And then the, kind of this next series, I'm kind of backpedaling a little bit because while I definitely recommend and I've talked about these things and feature them often, I would say these are more kind of icing on the cake. I would include these in upper body workouts or chest focused workouts for sure, but I wouldn't make these kind of like your bread and butter. These are great exercises in general, but they're all kind of push up variations. And if you guys didn't see it, I got a video on talking about the total, the best way I kind of do like a total gym push up. I will link that down below. If you guys want to check that out, some great tips in that video doing any kind of push up at an incline or decline or using the glide board, all different, crazy different unique positions and ways to make this harder and easier, don't get me wrong, uh, but I would consider them more supplemental to the other Total Gym foundational ex push exercises I did. Definitely not bad exercises, but just ones that I wouldn't focus so heavily on. I know that's not super specific, but I just wanted to give you guys a general overview and update what I think are the best positions and movements and exercises to do to work your chest on a Total Gym. If there's some I didn't cover that you guys wanna, have, wanna add your two cents in, definitely drop it down below in, in the comment section. Otherwise, I will see you guys on the next video.